Good morning, I'm Chaplain Audrey Kanegi, and I welcome all of you, all of you who are gathered here in person, all of you who are gathered at Welsh Mountain Home, at East Bethany Chapel, in healthcare, and in your own homes, welcome to this worship service. I also want to welcome and introduce Nancy Stokes, our accompanist this morning. Um, Nancy and her husband are here. They live in Lancaster locally, and she has some experience playing in other retirement communities in a setting like this, and so we are so grateful for her help with our service this morning. Now, you may have noticed as you walked in this morning, it's a little bit different in the sanctuary this morning. Maybe you had to find a different seat to sit in than the one that you usually do. We are grateful um, for all of these beautiful comforters. They were created here at Landis Homes, and they are going to go around the globe to people who need their warmth, who need the love with which they were created and sent in the name of Jesus. And so we're going to hear a little bit more about how they come to be, the project that it is, and um, MCC, the agency that is sending them. But as we gather this morning to worship, <clears throat> I want us to think about the source of all of that creative love and that service that goes into these blank. Where does that, those resources, that motivation, that strength comes from? It comes from God of our strength. Turn in your hymnals to number 36, and we're going to sing together, God of our strength. Invite James Martin to come and lead us in song. Join me in a call to worship. I will read the light print, the leader part, and we will respond 
with all in the dark print. Open our ears to hear your word. Open our eyes to see your presence. Open our arms to embrace the community. Open our minds to the beauty of truth and open our hearts to the joy of new life. Number 349, Spirit of the Living God. Sing it another time. And number 356, 356, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. In these songs, we are inviting God to act upon not just our, what we do, but who we are, so that we, as we serve, are living out of the love of Jesus. Number 556. And we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3. So as you may have guessed, this morning's offering is going to the MCC Comforter Project here at Landis Homes. If you would like to contribute to this fund, you can put your offering in the offering box between the chaplain's office or place it in campus mail. Checks can be made out to Landis Homes. 
to tell us a little bit more about this project, I want to invite Leon and Elaine Good to come forward. They're also going to lead us in a prayer of blessing on these comforters. Thank you, Audrey. The comforters that you see around you this morning have been made by volunteers, most of whom live here at Landis Homes, but we also have a lot of help from people in the community. And many hands, loving hearts, make light work, but also we care about those who receive them. Twice a month, we meet in the West Community Room to knot these comforters, and when they're complete, Lynn and I put them in our car, take them over to the Material Resources Center of the Mennonite Central Committee in Ephrata. There, they will be inspected, folded, bailed, and shipped. The comforters in our display are about are 41, and that's about enough to make two bales. In the past year, MCC shipped 53,601 comforters to places like El Salvador, Malawi, Ukraine, that's where most of them went, Zambia, Canada, and Puerto Rico. Our group completed 247 of those. Scattered throughout the display at the back and in the, audio, in the lobby are stories of people who have gratefully received comforters. Please pray for them. The offering today goes into a fund which we use to pay for our supplies. We need to buy fabric for the backs, batting for the middles. The tops are almost entirely, well, yeah, are entirely volunteer provided. So while Lynn leads us in a prayer of blessing, please reach out if you can and touch a comforter and pray with him for the recipients. <clears throat> Let's pray. <clears throat> Eternal Father, God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, God of Ruth, Esther, and Mary, God of the comfortable and well-off, God of people who are poor and destitute, we honor you today by giving of our tithes and offerings to provide warmth and comfort to those who are suffering around our world in places like Ukraine, Syria, Gaza, and Sudan. We're grateful for Mennonite Central Committee and its partner organizations which can distribute these comforters we have made to those in great need. As they are given in the name of Christ, we dedicate ourselves to be the hands and feet of Jesus here in our own community. May your name be exalted and your kingdom brought closer here and abroad. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you, Elaine and Leon. I appreciate the opportunity to lay my hands on that comforter, to know that somebody who needs it is going to feel its warmth, and I hope our love along with that. Our scripture reading this morning come from Mark 4, 26 to 29, as well as 1 Peter 4, 10. You can follow along on the back of your bulletin. The parable of the growing seed. He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground, night and day. Whether he sleeps or he gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces the grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel 
in the head, and as soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. 1 Peter 4.10 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. As we have read about the kingdom of God, let's sing about the kingdom of God. Turn in your hymnal to 324, Seek Ye First, 324. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The sermon this morning is entitled Growing in Love. Hyacinth Stephen is joining us. She is the wife and mother of four children. She has a heart and a commitment to bring the good news wherever she goes. Hyacinth has served as the, past, as the church as a pastor, a teacher, mentor, and program developer. Her ministry model is to create opportunities that foster transformative discipleship. A hallmark for Hyacinth is a commitment to the Ministry of Reconciliation with an emphasis on intercultural bridge building. Hyacinth is a qualified administrator and coach of the Intercultural Development Inventory. She um, works with congregations and faith-based organizations to implement biblically-based models for intercultural development. And I, in my role as a pastor, got to experience Hyacinth in that role and really appreciated her work. For over a decade, Hyacinth has been on various organization and denominational boards. She is a New York City Bishop Oversight Team member serving as a bishop. Hyacinth works also for MCC, the Mennonite Central Committee's East Coast, as a regional executive director. Um, since March of 2022. In the U.S., MCC has four regional offices uh, that connect directly with supporters and churches, organizations like Landis Homes to carry out local programming, like our Comforter Project. Uh, MCC East Coast works in partnership with Anabaptist churches and organizations in 18 states in the East Coast of the U.S. and in uh, the island of Puerto Rico. This region is also home to seven material resource centers. I did not know that, wow. Including the one in Ephrata. Uh, that's where these comforters will be going. The region has 17 MCC thrift shops. You may have gone to one of those. Four relief sales and hosts 10 mobile meat canning sites. Um, and so this, the, their primary office is in Philadelphia. So Hyacinth, I invite you to join us this morning. And uh, let me pray with you as we hear God's word this morning. God, thank you so much for Hyacinth. Thank you for giving her and her husband a safe drive here. Open our hearts now to hear your word as she brings it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for the warm welcome and introduction. It is a blessing and joy to be here this morning. I, again, my husband Ben is sitting over here in the front and thanking God for him and his support and being with me here this morning. Um, 
Uh, it was such a special moment uh, for to experience Leon and Elaine this morning as the blessing and touching the comforter. That was really special. I get to see comforters going into the bales and people working on them when I'm working in the effort office and the MR at the MRC Material Resource Center. But to sit in a worship service with the comforters, there was something very unique and special in feeling God's love and presence. So thank you for the display and the ministry that you're doing here um, with the Comforter Project. Part of what I wanna say this morning as well is thank you. Thanking God for the gifts that are in this room, the comforters and the so many other gifts that are present in this room in hearts and minds in ways that maybe you have connected with MCC. The warmth and comfort knowing that each of us strives to be faithful stewards of God's grace and his love and sharing that with others in so many different ways forms. You gave us a bit of a snapshot. The goods gave us a bit of a, the snapshot of MCC comforters and how many went out last year. And I was glad you said that because I would have had to scurry in my notes to get the total for the year. But what I did want to share in thanks is that just in two months, what happens as many hands come together in the ministry of bringing comfort through comforters. And so just this July and August, 2,454 comforters were sent to Malawi and 2,616 comforters were sent to Gaza, 2,661 to Ukraine, to Puerto Rico, 755 to Florida, 163. And just in two months, through our volunteers and the generosity of hearts and hands coming together, 8,249 comforters were sent out. And that is not possible to do without donations, time, love, and a desire to share God's love and compassion for all. MCC now is in its 104th year. Many of you may have stories about MCC over the decades. I'm not sure if there's anyone here 104 and might be able to tell us or listening online and be able to tell us a part of an origin story the first day maybe that you heard about MCC. And that's okay because I believe that in this room and in the other listening spaces, there are many of us who have have a story of the way that maybe they have served with MCC or MCC has touched their hearts or you have touched the heart of someone through your service and in that someone else has touched your heart as well with love. One of the things that I'm often so excited about having the opportunity to serve and work with MCC is that growing in love is a reciprocal experience. It's not just in our giving and sending, but it's also in our receiving as we learn about people around the world and their stories touch our heart and fill us and inspire us to continue to grow in God's love and to be witnesses of God's love with neighbors near and far. In the parable of the growing seed, it is this invitation to think about what the kingdom of God is like. And I often think about in the Lord's Prayer where it, there is the part that says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And as we as followers of Jesus grow in the good soil of his word and we respond by sharing God's love and compassion we participate in thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. As we think about seeds being scattered in the parable of the growing seed, this is a reminder for us about what happens when we decide to take this moment and think about a little seed and its potential and its possibility. But the seed alone cannot do the work. The seed must get into some good soil. And that soil is us growing in God's love, growing in God's word, and becoming responsive. The interesting thing about a farmer, as, and I am not a farmer, so you, if there are any farmers around, you know this probably much better than me. But I think about the farmer and faith. 
and how when you put a seed in the ground and you're preparing to plant, there are things that happen to the soil to nurture it, but there's this other really powerful stepping away moment of faith to say, I've done now what I can do, and now I am trusting for the soil. I am trusting for the water. I'm trusting now for the growth. And in much of our work in MCC, comforters, that is like a seed. The relief kits that we send, those are seeds. The soil then is the space that we put it into communities and trust that as communities come together, there will be a growing, a growing of relationships, a growing of care, a growing of nurture and support. MCC cannot do its work without volunteers and partners who are like the soil, helping for the work to grow and to multiply and be spread. And we grow and learn from the communities that we are a part of that share with us new resources that we come alongside with to help the work. In the parable of the sower, Jesus uses this to describe the responsibility um, that each of us have as disciples of, of Christ and following him. In this image that is on the screen, this invitation is a reminder that despite the research and scientific breakthroughs and innovations in technology, farming remains largely an act of faith. You plant a seed and, uh, and harvest a crop. What happens in between is some of it is completely out of our control. And as we give in the ministry of MCC, we are giving in trust. Trusting that our seeds God is using as part of ministry to the world, sharing God's love and compassion. And we also are mindful that as we as an organization are participating in this kingdom work, God is growing us as individuals. So often I think about MCC's mission statement, which I do have a slide for and I'll show it in a little bit later. But I often think, and as I participated at times in general orientation and the power of MCC's mission around sharing God's love and compassion for all, that mission is only as good as those who are willing to embody it, those who are, are willing to practice it. And so I'm grateful for the invitation that we are given to share God's love and passion, compassion for all. This gentleman who is sitting here in this image, uh, Eduardo Rodriguez. He is sitting in this lush and shady spot um, next to a stream. And those in his community often call this stream an Eden space, a space where farmers can look back and see the goodness of God in growing, a space where they can be reminded of the blessings that God has put in the environment through creation that starts with seeds, that starts with learning how to care for what God has given to us. In Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7, it says, but I, bless, I will bless the person who puts his trust in me. He is like a tree growing near a stream and sending out roots to the water. It is not, a, not afraid when hot weather comes because its leaves stay green. It has no worries when there is no rain. It keeps on bearing fruit. And some of the work that MCC does with its partners around the world is to live into actually this text of how do we not worry, but how do we plan and prepare as we plant? How do we mitigate and change strategies for taking care of the seeds so that there can be sustainable resources for communities near and far? This beautiful pineapple plant grow, thrives and grows in a community that thinks about what do we do with our seeds and how do we bring community together to care for creation and to care for one another, supporting healthy growth in communities. The seeds are planted, but they need good soil to grow in. Part of that good soil becomes love, growing in patience, growing in kindness, in gentleness, and self-control, growing in acknowledgement of what God has given us and how we can be good stewards of that. That's part of what MCC 
strives to participate in and learn from in communities near and far. In this image, oh, oh, I thought I was changing, I'm sorry. All right, there we go. Uh, in this image of these beautiful banana leaves, these, this image is a community garden in Puerto Rico. Uh, it is the Arene uh, Finque, a farm, Finque meaning farm, a space where communities and organic farming happens to strengthen um, the local resources in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is an island that is a, a, a connection to the US that is a beautiful tropical environment and as you can see here, uh, has the opportunity to grow its own vegetation, lovely um, fruits and vegetables, but 85% of its uh, farm vegetation is imported from other places. And so with some of the instability in, in the hurricanes and other um, environmental impact, local farmers are looking for ways to protect their seed and saying Puerto Rico is a place where there is good soil and we want to give attention to that soil so that we can continue to support local farmers and local community opportunities for growing and sustainability. And so farmers are saying we have seed and we believe that this is good soil. Part of MCC's work and partnerships is supporting spaces where they know there is good seed good seed for growing, good seed for taking care of what God has given in local communities. And we too learn from the good things that are happening in those communities. In the text, it talks about Jesus told them, part of our work as MCC is to listen is to listen to what's happening here with the Comforter Project. What can we learn from the work that you do as you gather as a community? Part of our work is to take time to listen as we partner with communities around the world and we don't just choose what do they need to grow, um, things, for things to grow in their community. We listen to think about what do we learn and how can we support. Jesus invites us to take time to listen, to listen in prayer, to listen for ways that we can join and be a part of communities. Thinking about, as it says in 1 Peter 4 and 10, each of you should use whatever you, gifts that you have and that you have received to serve others and to do that faithfully. Thank you for what you do here to serve faithfully. MCC's partnerships depend on us thinking not only about the magnitude of what we have, but the little that we have. The importance of knitting a comforter, how important that is as we think about sharing God's love and compassion for all, bringing comfort to those as a symbol that someone else is praying for them in a country or a neighborhood or a community that they don't even know. But these comforters and other parts of our relief that we send out around the world are reminders that others are touching and agreeing with their care and for their care. Okay, I'm gonna move on here. Part of what we do in our work is also thinking about opportunities for unconventional ideas. And when I think about an unconventional idea, I think about faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of what is not yet seen. And if you looked recently at our um, summer and spring commonplace, you might have seen this image in the magazine. And this is one of my favorite stories, I would say, around this innovative opportunities to think about growing, and not just the soil on the ground, but even as the scripture says, uh, look up, I lift my eyes up to the hills, from whence my help cometh, my help cometh from the Lord. And so this project in Bangladesh is working with farming communities that were experiencing massive flooding. And as a result of that flooding, they were losing crops, they were losing opportunity to feed their families, not only feed their families, but take care of their families, reducing opportunities to sell in the marketplace. But through partners in MCC that work along with MCC, and MCC works along with them, some of the new innovative ways, ideas that have come, are these trellis 
here I want to show you this image, this trellis gardening. And instead of the floodwaters wiping out the crops, they are growing their crops on trellises. And they're, they're growing peppers and eggplants and all the things that they need to sustain their communities. And as those who have looked alongside and maybe not been quite as aware of this partnership, this is an opportunity for new types of discipleship and community. Come and grow with me. Come let us grow in love. So neighbors are saying, how are you growing on these trellises? And it has created a community of new type of innovative farming that is not only sustaining one, but sustaining many. Not just feeding their family, but feeding the community and increasing opportunities for selling in the marketplace despite floodwaters that in the past would have created starvation, lack, and increased poverty. Growing in love. What I also really celebrate about this image is that it is not just one. The former image that I showed you of the women gathering around the soil are these um, learning classes at 12 at a time. What does that remind us of? Who did Jesus work with 12 at a time? His disciples to get the word out. And so the women in that slide, let's go back to that for a minute. They are working together and getting the word out in their community about growing in love together, learning together, sharing together, and creating new things that are growing in their community and opportunities for that. Thank you for what you do to help create growing communities as MCC continues to work at sharing God's love and compassion for all. And in the name of Christ, that remains an important, a founding part of our work. We're doing this in the name of Christ. We work in many different places, 45 different countries we work in to do our work and partnering and learning and sharing and growing together. I want to invite us at this time for this mindful prayer of our neighbors, our neighbors near and far. And so if you would just pray with me at this time. Creator of the universe, you made the world in beauty and restore all things in glory through the victory of Jesus Christ. We pray that Wherever your image is still disfigured by poverty, sickness, selfishness, war, and greed, the new creation of Christ may appear in justice, in love, and peace to the glory of your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you for welcoming me to your worship space this morning. Blessings. Thank you, Hyacinth, for the way that you wove stories with scripture, and then a story and then scripture, and it gave us that feeling that even though these words were written thousands of years ago, God is present now. God is present now, and so that gap comes to nothing. And our lives, God is in our lives present, and his truth is woven into our present if we are willing to open our eyes and be aware and let God have his own way. So join us in singing a, a hymn of response, number 504, Have Thine Own Way, Lord, 504. Why? 
wash me just now, Lord, and wash me just now, as in thy presence humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way, wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Christ only always living in me. That is our motivation, our driving force for why we serve, for why we love, for why we do what we do. And I, I pray and I hope that you were encouraged to offer what little, even if it feels like a little tiny seed, that you would offer it this week in some way um, as an expression of our love for Christ. In a minute, we'll close with ascending um, as Nancy plays the prelude or postlude. Um, Hyacinth and I will be in the foyer, and after the postlude, you can consider yourself dismissed and come out and greet them, um, Hyacinth and her husband, and uh, you might have a question or two for her. Leon and Elaine, if you wouldn't mind joining us as, as well, if you have any questions about the MCC um, comforter project, uh, they'll be back there and hopefully to have some answers for you. Join me in the sending. It's also in your bulletin. I will read the light print and respond with you in the dark print, the all. We came to worship. We go now to serve. We have been given the light. We go now to let it shine. We have been blessed by God's love. We go now to share it. We are Christ's disciples. We go now to witness to all. <laughs> 